Hello friends, this video on morphology of flowering plants part 25 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will discuss about a new topic that is estivation. So what is estivation? Here we will talk about how these different parts like the petals and the sepals, how they are organized or how they are arranged in a flower with respect to each other. I mean, we have spoken about the four worlds of a flower, right? Calyx, Corolla, Androsium and Gynosium. So now we will see how they are arranged with respect to each other. So estivation is basically the arrangement of sepals or petals in a floral bud with respect to the other members of the same wall. So how are the sepals and the petals organized? Now here on the screen, you actually see so many different types of flowers, right? And if you look at it, the arrangement of their petals, the arrangement of their sepals, they all vary. For example, if you take this rose as an example, the way the petals are arranged in a rose is quite different from the way the petals are arranged in a sunflower, right? So here you see how the petals are arranged and how the petals are arranged here. So this arrangement of the petals or sepals with respect to other members of the same wall is known as estivation. Now there are four types of estivation which we will discuss here. Valvet estivation, twisted estivation, imbricate estivation and vexillary estivation. So these are the four types of estivation which we will discuss. So let us start with valvet estivation. What happens here is the sepals or petals in a whorl just touch each other at the margin without overlapping. So somewhat like this. So whether you talk about the sepals or you talk about the petals, they are arranged somewhat like this. If this is one sepal, this would be the next sepal, this would be the next one, this would be the next one and then finally this would be the next one. So basically they all just touch each other. They do not overlap with each other. This kind of arrangement is called valvate estimation. So here you can see this pictorially, this each of these represents a petal or a sepal. I mean it depends. It is not always the arrangement of petals. The petals are arranged in this way, the sepals are also arranged in this way. Example is calotropis. So here in calotropis you can see for yourself how the petals are arranged. See that they do not overlap with each other, one petal after the other. The next type that is twisted estivation. So in twisted estivation, margin of a sepal or a petal overlaps with that of the next one. So that means, let us suppose this is one petal or sepal. So the margin of this will overlap with the next one. Again, the margin of this will overlap with the next one. Again, this will overlap with the next one. Again, this will overlap with the next one. So there are regions of overlap, right? And that is why it is known as twisted estimation, right? So here also you can see the same thing. See, this is one petal, this is the next one. So there is a portion of overlap. Again, this is here, this is here. So there will be a region of overlap. Again, there is a region of overlap. So there are regions of overlap between any two petal or sepal. So this kind of estivation, now this overlapping can be clockwise or anti-clockwise. I mean, it can be this way as I have shown here or it can also be like this that you have it here and then you have it like this, then you have it like this, you have it this way and then you have it this way. So it can be both clockwise and anti-clockwise. Example is China rose. So if you look at the arrangement of petals or sepals in China rose, you can actually see this kind of estimation. The third type is imbricate estimation. So let us see what happens in imbricate. Now what is the meaning, what is the meaning of the term imbricate? So basically this term means something which is shaped like a roof tile. You know the tiles of the roof? So something which is shaped like that is known as imbricate. 
So it is basically the margins of sepals or petals overlap one another but not in a particular direction. For example, something like this. You have one petal here, next one like this, next one like this. Again, you have this way and again you have this way. So it is not in a specific pattern. Like in case of twisted, this above this, again above this, again this should have been above this if it would have been a twisted estimation. But in imbricate estimation, it is like twisted estimation but the, there is no specific pattern of twisting. Sometimes it is above, sometimes it is below so that the overlap doesn't follow a specific pattern. So that is known as imbricate estimation. So in this, two types of overlapping is possible. One possibility is that the one petal is overlapped on both the margins. For example, this petal. So it is overlapped on both the margins. So this petal becomes internal. Whereas there might be one petal which is overlapping the neighbors on both the margins. For example, this one. So this becomes an external petal. So this becomes an external petal and this becomes an internal petal because it is overlapped on both the margins and this one is overlapping on both the margins. Right? So imbricate estivation consists of internal and external petals. So if you look at this flower, you can see this one is an internal petal. See? This is overlapped on both the margins whereas this one is an external because it is overlapping on the neighbors on both the margins. So example of this kind of estivation is the gulmohar flower. Now the last and the fourth type that is vexillary estivation. So this kind of estivation is only seen in flowers with five petals. So it is not a very common one but it is seen in flowers with five petals. So how is the arrangement here? And that to these five petals they are all of different sizes. So the largest petal overlaps the smaller two smaller ones which in turn overlaps the smallest one. So the arrangement would be somewhat like this. So this is the largest petal. Inside this you have two smaller ones which in turn would overlap the smallest one. So that means if I diagrammatically try to represent it, it would be like this. This is the largest petal. Then it will envelop two smaller ones. This in turn will envelop the two smallest one. So this is how the pattern will look like or the arrangement will look like. This is seen in the pea plant. So if you look at the flower of a pea plant, if you look at this flower closely, this is how it looks like. So see this is the largest petal. So the largest petal is actually covering two smaller ones which in turn is covering the smallest one. Right? So this is how a pea flower looks like. So this was all about estivation. So, so now you understand when we talk about the structure of flower, it is not only the different parts of the flower, it is also about how the sepals are organized, how the petals are organized. So all these things also play important roles. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.